Hi everyone. So finally finished Chain of Gold, first book in the Last Hour series. My sister read it super quickly. So she's <laughs> been bothering me with spoilers and stuff. Not that I actually mind. <laughs> yeah, I've been waiting six years for this book to come out. I finished The Infernal Devices in 2014. So it's been a long wait and I'm happy to say that it was a good wait and I'm happy that I waited that amount of time to read it. It was very good. It was great. It was honestly so easy to read and the characters are amazing in it. Yeah, very well developed. I feel like I got a clear understanding, but it also helps reading the, Shadow, the Tales from the Shadow Hunter Academy from beforehand. So you get at least a little feeling for James and the friend group and it was nice. It was good. Yeah, I'm actually glad I did that. Definitely. I was surprised that I, I did read it. Yeah, because you didn't really care for Simon that much. <laughs> I mean, I love Simon, but um, it, I mean, if you don't like Simon, the series is a little harder to get into, but um, I thought it was good. I thought it was a good read and gave you a lot of diff different history points. And it also gave us stuff in an inside look of the infernal devices, like right after the infernal devices with like the Jack the Ripper mm -hmm. sequence as well. It was pretty good. But this is not what the video is about. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you have not finished Chain of Gold, stop watching and come back later. This is going to be a spoiler video. First going to be our reactions and then we're going to dive a little deeper. So um, general overall reactions mm -hmm. and review of the book. It was awesome. And I think that I really enjoyed reading from Cordelia. Personally, like, I didn't know if I was going to feel that connection towards her when we, I first saw that she was on the cover. I was like, oh, Cordelia. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Lucy's friend. I agree. But then we feel like we really connected with her, and it was a very nice read from hers. I was worried first reading about it, and then the cover is her. Yeah. So I was like, this is all going to be about her. Like, I really want to know more about everybody I love's kids. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, of course the car stairs are super cool. She loves writing about them in her series, but... I don't know. I wasn't sure how I felt about it centering so much about around her. Yeah, because of her dad being Elias and we only got like what a small um we got to meet him a little bit in Infernal yeah. Devices and Clockwork Princess all the way at the end. So we didn't really know she doesn't have a clear connection to Jem. She didn't really know him. So we couldn't really get that part of her. Mm hmm But definitely I liked seeing her get to meet these characters. The characters we've known so long and her being able to describe it in a new and fresh way. Yeah, she's a, a great leading lady. Mm -hmm. I feel like you get emotionally attached to her, like, immediately. Like, right when we are introduced to her, you're already rooting for her and you want the best for her. I mean, you want the best for all the characters, yeah. but I don't think I could have picked a better person to lead it. I, I think it would have been a little bit annoying if it was always from, like, yeah, Lucy James or James. <laughs> They would be just excited about everything. I'm just know. talking about Cordelia, the beautiful Cordelia, everything. Yeah. And it would have been nice to read, but I think that um, having um, who she picked to read. Plus, we're getting introduced to these characters Definitely. the same way that she is. So, I mean, yeah, she had like prior experiences with James and Lucy, but I think more so we get that introduction with her. So we're just going along for the ride with mm -hmm. her. So I think it just makes it that much more enjoyable. Definitely. And then like reading about how she looks and like, she sounds freaking gorgeous. I know. Like <laughs> us reading it, we're like, I wish. I want to be her. <laughs> I know. And I, that's what I think. I've seen other people mention this as well. And I want to, I want to pinpoint it too. She has like a person of color as a leading lady yeah. in this book. Which she hasn't done that before. Yeah. Which I think is really awesome, especially for the time as well, because I don't know, I, I took a deep dive on her Tumblr, so <laughs> it helps to answer the questions. Like, we couldn't get everything from the book. We still had to go look at her Tumblr and get a background in yeah. and about the car character. stairs get around, and I think that's awesome. Like, Definitely. you see all different types of car stairs, different looks. Different, different ethnicities, races, like everything. They're all over the place. And then for Emma to turn out still be I know. <laughs> in the future, I don't know. They get around. They get around. So, yeah. Um, but I think what Cassandra Clare is so good at is that I know like ab around this time, I even questioned it when I started reading it. There's so many LGBT characters. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's interesting. Like it, for the time, I was like, I don't know. But she described it in such a great way that just because time is going on doesn't mean things are getting more progressive. It doesn't mean yeah. things are oh, getting Oh, you saw better. that post. That yeah. post was really, really yeah. good. I really liked that I post. think that was so spot on that I think it takes two steps forward, then a step back, two steps forward. Like, it just doesn't yeah. really... You know what? Like, of course, there were LGBT people 
then mm -hmm. and I mean we weren't around then we don't know but it doesn't even matter if it was exactly like this because we're reading it now and we're reading what we find enjoyable what we find relatable definitely so I think she talked about it really nice so if you want to read about that go to her tumblr because I thought it was really interesting because when I started reading it I was like wow there are a lot of LGBT characters not complaining because I don't think it was forced or definitely anything not. I loved all the characters Maybe get, except for Charles, but he had his own <laughs> reasons. But everything but else, like, I really liked seeing them coming out and basically, and then you could see Anna being comfortable in her own skin, being able to go around and be happy without anybody oppressing her. That was, that was nice. And seeing yeah. Alec go through what he went through in Mortal Instruments, even though it's way in the future after this, and he went through so much. Yeah. But, um, it was nice. It was nice to read everything and see Alistair and how he was dealing with it and Thomas not yeah. really speaking about it. It yeah. was good. So relationships, our favorite part, because I mean, that's what we loved about um, the Infernal Devices. Oh yeah, and the love triangle. The one that we really weren't that upset about. Usually love triangles, you're like, only this one. I only want this one. But Infernal Devices, we were like, maybe both. I mean, you're still kind of rooting for them both. You, you you're like, them you both. dig it both ways. You're like, and Tessa's so great. You don't get like upset about anything. Like, so, I mean, and I feel like the relationships here, I mean, we're only in the first book, so yeah. they're not so clear cut, but I mean, you already start rooting for people and wanting things to happen and getting upset about certain pairings. <laughs> we'll start with James and Cordelia. Yes, um, the, mo the most painful one in yeah. the series, by far, seeing Grace being the wedge between them, of course, and seeing how James always truly loves Cordelia, but of course there's some stupid little charm on him. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know a bracelet would ruin him. <laughs> oh my god, it's always something. I feel like the Herondales, it's always it, something. Course. It's ridiculous. It, it's hard to read it, but I, I root for them, of course. But I mean, we talk about it too. We, we wouldn't mind her with Matthew either. But I, yeah, I do think James and Cordelia are ending though. I just, I can't help it. Like that history there, I just, I can't discard and that connection. Fully. Of course, and the finale of the book being the way it was, it sets up the rest of the books in a certain way yeah. that you can't really see it getting another way. I mean, but also Infernal Devices, remember who proposed to Tessa? Who was getting married to Tessa? I mean, yeah. It's sir, it said it in a certain way in the second book. And you thought it was going to go in a certain direction. I mean, but she did say it's going to be a love triangle like no other. Definitely. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. And I just want Matthew to be happy. We don't really know what feelings <laughs> he has towards anyone at the moment. We well, only, she's, she kind of confirmed. She confirmed it that he does have feelings. But the thing is, is that he, it's only been voiced. Or like his discomfort in certain situations. We don't know how deep they deep are, it, how deep they run, or how they could be very superficial too. Yeah, it could just it's be about intriguing. looks. Yeah, and he knows James is complicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think there's definitely something for Cordelia, and I wouldn't mind it being explored. But <laughs> um, Matthew seems hot. <laughs> but I mean, imagine how complicated that would get. But because James's feelings come like. You know, yeah. like, I don't, the bracelet doesn't work fully. Like, there, it gets not. weaker, it gets stronger. Like, it's just kind of fluctuating. So, James is obviously very confused for obvious reasons. But, um, yeah, so it, if that happens, if something happens, I don't even know. But I do really do, I do really like Matthew and Lucy. I think that that can be explored. Obviously, she doesn't have really true feelings at the moment for him. She sees him more as her brother's friend. She grew up, basically, with Matthew. And she knows exactly who she, he is. She knows his family. Like, they've, gr they've grown up together. And it's hard to see someone past that certain point. Unless, you know, this whole issue she's having with Jesse blows over. <laughs> but if I foresee if Jesse comes back alive, that will be her endgame. But if he doesn't, it's probably going to be Matthew. I mean, that door is still open. So, I mean, <sighs> ironic that it's a door, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it, it still seems like it'll happen. This is something they're working for. Her and Grace want. Yes. So, I mean, multiple people want it. Tatiana wanted it. We want it to be, it's going to be complicated. Definitely. And she already feels this connection towards Jesse. And she has this already connection towards Ghost mm -hmm. itself. So, Jesse being a ghost, I think, would even heighten that and heighten That's her true. hold of it. And if she were any deeper interactions, it'd probably strengthen her powers within the ghost realm. Yeah. I mean, I just also don't want the whole Matthew thing. I don't want anybody to try to like fix him or be, he's like, this is my reason for getting better. No, like he obviously he has, has to, to do it face, himself. Yeah, he has to face it himself and deal with it. Alcoholism is 
a problem that you work on for the rest of your life. That is a disease that you have to work on. By yourself. Yeah. Right? You, no one's going to force you to do anything. You and have to be able to get to that point yourself. Lucy's already made that clear. So <laughs> yeah, she, she definitely did. Um, if anybody's going to put him in his place, so it's, it's her. It's her. It's her. Yeah. Cordelia and him don't really have that. Yeah, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, maybe when they get closer. I do want to see a friendship between them. I think that they have, like, they'd have a cool... Like, because Matthew gets along with everyone. He's a very, like, charismatic dude that's very funny. So I, I would like to see that dynamic a little bit more. Agreed. Okay. So, next little pairing. Let's talk about Alistair and uh, Thomas. And Charles. And Charles. <laughs> <laughs> that love triangle. Oh my god. What, how did Charles turn out the way he did? This is what bothers me. I don't know because it sucks because his parents are so caring. I love them they so love much. <laughs> they are literally one of my favorite couples. Like, I obviously, like, love Will and Tessa. Like, love Tessa with Jem as well. But, like, I love Charlotte and Henry so much. Maybe because I relate to Charlotte. And I'm That's like, I need a Henry. You know what? Everyone needs a little Henry in their life. He's, he's a puppy dog that I just, I don't see how their kids turned out the way they did. Maybe even Matthew a little bit, I guess. Well, that's been kind of touched upon, so it I has. can see it happening. That one, yeah. But um, Charles but is Charles so, is like, awful. power hungry. And the way he talks about Charlotte saying she's too sensitive, I'm like, boy. Definitely him growing up with the console as his mother and having this sort of set of power and growing up in Idris has made influenced him to be the way he is and he was the first child born yeah. it, within the group so he came out and everyone probably was look how cute he is look how great he is he's the console's son look at him they all, all the all the parents were like already expecting their own kids but charles was the first one mm -hmm. of course he was baby it's like the oldest sibling how they ex how they always become the person in power like usually the older sibling is always becomes the president in the future are, are you attacking me i'm not attacking i'm just <laughs> speaking facts and speaking from statistics and i do think that him being born first in, in the group definitely influenced him to be the way he is i hadn't thought about that so actually. no yeah that's actually a really good point so how do you feel about him and alistair I think that it's awful what he's yeah. doing to Alistair. And Alistair, he's already going through his own issues. He really does not have to be dealing with Charles' bullshit at the moment. Yeah. Ugh, it's so hard. I don't know. It's just not fair. No, it's not. Because I, I feel like Alistair is more kind of accepting. He is. He he wants to he wants to accept himself. He's already gone through it being already dismissive towards how he even looks him bleaching his hair him yeah. wanting to look a certain way him wanting to be maybe even act straight like he does not feel comfortable within himself it's true and for someone not to accept him and not want, want to bring him out in the world to be with them i think it hurts him even more yeah and the way he treats him too yeah like it's just kind of like a little side piece yeah that's his mistress well mister <laughs> his mister <laughs> I, I and you know what like she told me like I was like I don't care about Alistair I don't really like nah. and then you're like just wait like you're gonna read about it and you're gonna develop sympathy towards him yeah. and root for his relationship with Thomas which I do like I want them both to be happy I know I feel so bad for them and I Thomas know. is so like forgiving of everything that happened with Alistair maybe not the line that just came out at the I end know, the end of that book I was like it's was really gonna end like this I'm gonna have this in my mind like this it hurt. It hurt. I hurt so pain. bad. Oh. And Matthew being obviously taking out his anger of the whole situ whole situation out on Alistair and Thomas's relationship. I know. <laughs> or lack thereof. <laughs> Matthew <laughs> needs to confront those demons and get all fixed and settled yeah. because this is really <laughs> messy. <laughs> it's not even only hurting himself anymore. He's hurting everyone around him. Yeah. He's a ticking time bomb. It with sucks this. because I feel like Alistair already, okay, he cut things off with Charles, which was a healthy decision. Mm -hmm. And he was like trying to make, imp like, make things better and go and, you know, mingle with them. And I get it. You can't fix that. That's like was a bad thing to do but um yeah i just i feel bad too because like, it just sucks the whole situation kind of sucks but you can tell where this is going yeah i hope like i hope 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 they end up happy i do too please <laughs> i'm scared though we always have like in different series we always have an lgbt couple that's usually just the token yeah. lgbt couple and usually they die or one of them dies someone always they always go through something and of course we see magnus and we see alec and we see them in such a happy relationship but i really hope other um relationships can go through the same thing and i want shadow hunter ones yeah i think that's like a whole interesting dynamic to it 
yeah being able to go through the shadow hunter ceremony as well being getting married yeah. and having a whole nice thing that would be nice um i do want to see how their, their relationship dynamic works when and they're actually if they're actually together we've only seen them um give a few words to each other become friends nothing else has happened i just want to see how the dynamic will work too before we start already praising their wedding <laughs> <laughs> which is too late because i already did it <laughs> so what about anna and ariadne I hope the best for them. I mean, we don't get that much information about them in this book. Only if you read Ghost of the Shadow Market, which we have not read yeah, yet. I haven't read it. That is actually next on my list. Um, I already put it on my Goodreads list that I need to read it. But um, definitely I want to know a little bit more about that. And it sucks seeing Anna go through that. And even Ariadne putting herself in that position. And getting, honestly, not even getting to marry the person that I guess like she wanted to marry, which is Charles, when she's in a coma that she got pushed out of being the fiance mm -hmm. and taken out of her position in that um but ultimately that would be better for her and anna <laughs> so like she had to go through it when she woke up but i mean i want anna to find love like Definitely. when i when you hear her and matthew talk about it like the conquests and you know how it's okay to love like multiple people which i it's fine but like you want them like i feel like it's like this wall it is it's a, a way wall. of protecting themselves and i just want them to be with the person that they love to find love and be happy yeah. i don't know i don't think it's, it's neither of them are happy no they're, they're not. not neither of them are happy as much as they could pretend to have this happiness and to pretend to be joyous of all their decisions and all their conquests and to act like they yeah. don't care like, they do just, care they do they, they do obviously care. do <laughs> so i mean yeah i i, I want to know more i also wanted to touch on the old relationships like tessa and will and all the parents um, we don't really see a lot of them, but we see Tessa and Will and that love and that fire is still <laughs> strong. It's still there. I would like to see more of it though. I, I would like to see more. I would like to see it. I love it. I, whenever I read about them, I read it over and over again, like it's, obsessive, like I'm memorizing I smile it. every time they come into scene and then you see him perk up whenever she gets into the same room as him. Like, it's just like cute. That's I so also want to see the other couples I from Infernal Devices interact more. Of course, Sophie and Gideon went through so much in this book. She loves Sophie and Gideon. I love Gideon. My man. <laughs> okay, nobody else. I feel like nobody else feels the same way about Gideon. But the thing is that he's so consistent, so strong, and so stable. That um, I know it's so boring to call someone, but I think that he just seems like a cool dude, and that he like gets all flustered over a maid that he found cute and that he finds strong. Like I thought it was such a beautiful story between them. And they so they made them suffer. I don't. Barbara, Cassie, why did you do this? Why you make it? Like I was like Barbara ain't gonna die, and then she died, and I'm like. At first they teased it, they were like, look, Barbara might die, and then they were like, okay, no, 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 she's fine, and then they kill her again. Sophie and Gideon, like, they've gone through so much, and I'm like, and that, poor babies. I know, and honestly, uh, Alistair's rumor also kind of hurt them too. I and know, it's mean. Like, okay, I'm like, I love Alistair now, but like, damn, did I have to say that? That was mean. Poor Sophie. <laughs> no. <laughs> Gideon. Gideon and Charlotte. <laughs> First of all, they had never really interacted that much. It never worked. I know <laughs> the reason why they did it, because they're the ones that are the closest in age. The rest of them would have been teenagers at the time. Mm -hmm. Like, more clo like it would make a little bit more sense, I guess, age-wise. But still, why? Honestly, <laughs> do they have nothing better to come up with? Yeah, and I was mad they didn't show Charlotte until the very end. And then they, I get, like, one line of her and Henry, and I'm like, yes, they waited. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, thank you. But it's like... Really, like, I've been here waiting for Charlotte to show up. Real and Cecily, we also didn't touch on them. I'd like to see them more. <laughs> I'd, like to see I, them. I'd like to see them more and their interactions with their daughter, Anna, and their son, yeah, Christopher. <laughs> we love Christopher. I could see totally Cecily, like, handling Anna well. Like, that yeah. would be de that's definitely the best parent for, like, that strong, women-centric nature of the same. You can do anything. You can be who you want. You can run away. You can do whatever you want. You yeah. can go live on your own. I bet you can do it. I say, I would say out of all the couples, they are the ones that get mentioned the most out of Will and Tessa. Yeah. Oh, and I do love, I wanted to say this, how Sophie and um, Henry teach the Mary Thieves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's so cute. I think that's adorable. I love it. <laughs> okay, so our favorite characters. Um, My favorite would be um, Cordelia and Matthew. Um, I like Matthew <laughs> because I like... Personally, I like seeing broken characters, and that sucks to say. You see people, you read about people go through so much in stories, but um, 
my personality, I like to see people uh, be able to fix their problems in a story and go through that. And Matthew is also very funny and I love comedic characters and Cordelia is obviously one of the strongest female characters we've seen and I get to see things through her point of view and it's really nice. It's very refreshing. It's funny because she, you love the Herondales and neither one of them are Herondales. Neither one of them are Herondales. I love, love, love the Herondales, but yeah, it's been a whirlwind. <laughs> yeah. This. I would say my favorite is probably the same. I mean, I love... Like, I love James and Cordelia together. James but, is... But I, baby Matthew, like, I just can't help it. He's so broken that I can't... I'm like Magnus. I'm like, yes, little broken baby. Like, I want to <laughs> help you. <laughs> and um, Cordelia... I Magnus. I know. And Cordelia is such a badass. I wish I was her every day. And had Cortana. Cortana's amazing. I love the car <laughs> series. And, like, the, they have Cortana. I'm like... That's it's always thing. the women wielding it. I know. And the way it chose her, I'm like... She a badass. I love her. Sorry, Alistair. You don't get it. Since we said characters we love, what about characters we hate? Grace. I had, <laughs> I had a nightmare about her that she was attacking me. <laughs> so that's how much I hate her. We we do not like her. The moment I saw her come on, I was like, I don't like her. Just the way they described the way she looked and the way she came on the scene, I was like, no. Nope. Mm -mm. And the way that James left Cordelia in the middle of the dance. Oh with my Grace, god! I, I was like, no disrespect. <laughs> that is disgusting. Yeah, that was really bad. And then Matthew like came in. He swooped in, saved the day. Like, yeah. Baby. I hate Grace. I hate her. She's so manipulative. And I get it. She's a victim. Like she's been abused, and she has her own stuff going on that we don't know about yet. But um, still hate her. Yeah, just the way she's able to like seduce men and and control them and then the whole bracelet thing with james it's just like the whole situation just like ugh, it makes me so mad and the way that just this book ended and i'm still like why didn't anybody get the bracelet off not even matthew that knew i know um cassandra claire said something about it but i'm still a little confused of how he would not have any recollection of him, her manipulating him or having any worrisome thought about his prophetize i know prophetize in other books have had issues that they can't really see each other's thoughts but I just don't feel that James and Matthew are really connected in this. I don't feel like they understand each other in this and that they haven't really had that those that connection right now with, in, with the start of this book. I think, to be honest, I think it has to do with the bracelet. Definitely. No, James has a mask on it and it's probably... And then Matthew's going his own issues that James doesn't know mm -hmm. about. That's a good point too. So it's multiple things that are like driving these Prabhupada apart and I don't want to see that happen. <laughs> I've seen people say that they have this intuitive connection, which I do think that they have. But I think right now, in the point of time that we're at in the book, I don't it, see they it. don't have it. They don't have it. They're disconnected at the moment. They can't even both, like... And I think that's what's causing so much pain for them as well. They don't even have that comfort within each other. No, they have to seek it somewhere else. I'm excited to see about Lucy and Cordelia once they're finally in Yeah, they've been mentioning it a lot in this book, and we really didn't get to see it. And we don't really get to see female and female um, Pravatai, but... Um, why, why do I have a feeling that the next book is going to start like that? Hopefully. I hope they become a tie and I get to see it and see their connection. Lucy obviously really wants it. She's so funny. She's so excited. I love she's her. Like, and I just she's don't. She's like a dog to me. I just don't understand how they don't um like they put so much emphasis on James being the hero that they that they're trying to speak about. They're always like, oh look at him and his um the demon blood, but they never mention Lucy. Lucy also I, they're not even asking her if she even has any special ability that like James. I think does. it's because she's a girl. Yeah. And during the time, yeah, it was a little bit more difficult. But it sucks seeing that because she feels a little not included. I know I wouldn't personally want to go to the shadow realm and talk to my demon grandfather, but maybe she would. Okay, maybe she would. I know I, I, that's something she'd bring up. She's always like, "Hey, I'm here too." And I, yeah, and, and I'm a Herondale. I know, and I have demon blood. Gosh, I think we also mentioned Charles too. And I don't hate him, but I'm just like, Ugh, little. How are you like? I hope we get some redeeming qualities soon because um this is gonna be rough to read about him just like this all the time i know i mean uh, cassandra claire is very good at giving character development so definitely we'll like see. we saw um in infernal devices like gabriel going through such that's major true, change, that's changes and we didn't really care for him before he was kind of just like a <laughs> so we're like mm. but then everyone goes to love gabriel so yeah that's true so, and he's with Cecily, so <laughs> part of the family him and will are cool now yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, my God, and Tatiana's so annoying. Oh my God, I hate them. <laughs> I mean, I feel, I feel bad too. But in like, the epilogue, I was like, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> really, all these issues because of her. When I forgot about her completely, I'm like Tatiana. And I just, I did a read through of Infernal Devices, not the epilogue. Um, not gonna do that to myself again. 
thank you very much. I got to see her and like how whiny she was even before um, her father died and everything. She was still so like arrogant and so awful to everyone. Yeah. So like this, everything happening to her and her getting this obsession with this whole aspect of her father being murdered and that her brothers are awful and that Will's awful and James is awful. But like, <sighs> Yeah, it's this whole victim complex. And it's I hate all this bitterness. I'm like, ugh. And then she passes that on to Grace, basically. Grace also has sort of like a bitter attitude towards everything. Um, Jesse doesn't seem like he got that. Yeah, I guess that's also what needs to be explored. I think there's a lot that Jesse doesn't know. Yeah, he's just chilling in the ghost realm. Like, um, even Cassandra Claire says he doesn't know about all his mother's activities. Which I th find it kind of hard to believe, seeing as that his unconscious body is always around Tatiana, and he wouldn't have witnessed her talking to any weird demons. He's like, oh, yo, mom, what you doing there as a ghost? Seeing as he can travel so frequently and see everything during the night. During the day, he's stuck in his um, unconscious body, I believe. That's what I read on her page. I definitely know that he can be his, his mother and his sister, and Lucy can see him. That's it. Yeah. And James saw him for a second, but he probably thought he was hallucinating. Like, hmm, that's weird. Like, what, is that? what is that? And Matthew's like, me? I'm your parabatai. He's like, no! no. <laughs> he's like, that one! And then he's probably gonna forget about it, just like James forgets about other stuff, like his feelings for Cordelia. <laughs> that is so frustrating. Expectations for the next book? What do you think is gonna happen? I don't know. The thing is, is that I think this is the first time I read one of her series, and I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know who's gonna end up together and it's super frustrating because usually I can see a clear pathway or I read the books when the series is already over. So I already I already know what's gonna happen. Yeah. I mean maybe I can make the argument that um, I read Lady Midnight when it first came out but even then I could see a clear way it was gonna go. You could see some stuff going on, some developments but this one I feel like you see the developments but you're like I'm scared. Yeah, I'm scared. After going on her Tumblr, I got even more scared. Yeah, she's definitely gonna like, put us in the ringer for next book. Yeah, plus, I feel like there's a lot that's gonna happen with Cordelia, especially, like, it alludes to a lot with Cortana, like, when Elias was like, it, like, could bring you sadness, like, be yeah. careful. And, um, whole, um, Belial? Yeah, I don't know how to say that. I don't know how to say the demon. I, I was saying Belial. <laughs> Belial, Belial, whatever the heck, greater demon, the, the prince. Of one of the princes Prince of, of thieves whatever um said that they can't get to james as long as cordelia and cortana are guarding him yeah. so i'm scared <laughs> so that's probably gonna put cordelia in between she mm -hmm. and he's definitely gonna try and get her away from james which might push her towards someone else i mean they can't kill cordelia right? i don't think they're gonna kill her i think maybe they may push her away from james but I'm still, like, scared. I feel like she's gonna pull some death. You know how she is with her second book of the series? <sighs> the second book is always hurtful. So. But it, it's always struggling. I'm scared. Ugh, that hurts. It hurts. Oh, she always does some shit in the second book. I guess even maybe just mid-series. Like, Mortal Instruments. Um, City of Glass was was a great read. But still, like, you went through stuff for you mm -hmm. that. You went through the ringer. I mean, she already, like, took us on this whole journey of despair and angst. I, <laughs> so it's just only going to get even more heightened, I think. Definitely. But I'm still excited. I honestly, I read it so fast. And I'm really ready for next book. Please. Yeah, I know. We have to wait a bit. It's hard. I mean, I, wait, I waited six years for this book. I think I can wait a year for the second one. I think definitely I want to see more of, like, I know it's not their story, but I still want to see, like... Yeah. Our, our old relationships, the parents. And I wanted to see Tessa meet her father. She had yeah. so many questions about her heritage before. And even though this is not their story, I think it's still very important for her to know her father. I agree. And, I mean, her father is targeting her son. Yeah. That would infuriate me, and I'm sure it infuriates her. If she even knew, because nobody talks about stuff. I know, nobody talks about nobody anything. Nobody talks about oh, classic. It's, it's always classic in the series. Like, the kids are always like, the but clay doesn't need to know. That's life, isn't it? Nobody talks to Prince ever. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> I want Magnus to walk in on someone. Sexy time. Oh, she said <laughs> this, she just said it was gonna happen. She said it was Magnus is gonna walk in on someone. So hopefully I'm, it's I'm, gonna be funny. I'm ready. We always see people walk in on other other people. Poor Alec had to walk in on his sister and Simon. <laughs> Magnus yeah, had Yeah, that one's bad. I'm ready. Okay. Um, okay, so um any questions you still have? 
when is the bracelet coming off? <laughs> when are Cordelia and um, Lucy gonna have their prophetai ceremony? Um, I think the bracelet, to be honest, I just, if my sister had a bracelet and she was acting weird whenever she had the bracelet, I feel like I would notice. We also don't wear as many. Um, as much That's, articles of clothing, we and they're not covered all the they're time. Not covered. They're always covered with the yeah, jacket, with the and jacket and the shirts. shirts and stuff. So maybe he's not seeing it, but but still, they always are like James suddenly has this mask on. Mm, that's so weird. Why did even Will's like my son acts weird? <laughs> I don't children. know why. Oh well. Oh well. Children go him through knowing stuff. he was going through stuff, and it was because he was keeping some secret. Did not talk about it with anyone. But it was like kids go through it. So it's like, what I went through. It's I'm like, so what did that change you to actually like want to figure out what's going on? I think what really bothered me too. Cassandra Claire talked about it, but I think I, it's still something that I'm like, I want to know more about. Is Grace is intentions when she took the bracelet off? Like yeah. he had it, and then she like I guess she kind of felt bad i don't know like she just she thought it was, that i think maybe she thought it was done that she already found she thought the whole thing was probably to get but she always knew that the, they wanted james james yeah. was part of the plan i don't know yeah. i think some type of like i think she's done with tatiana humanistic... she hates tatiana she's done with it she's not done i think she's a little done i don't think she's done i think the fact that the bracelet is back on that demon remember yes. he threatened her he did threaten her which but i don't you still have to follow through with the plan she put the bracelet back on james yeah but of course when you're threatened to do something and you value your life so much of course you're going to continue with the plan so i don't think I think, I think she's done with tatiana but she's scared oh yeah i think she's definitely scared so she's still going along with this plan definitely and the whole thing when she was like, oh, like, a year after, once you and Cordelia, a year later, oh, like, yeah. we could get, I'm like, Ew, no, no, we don't like you, Grace. <laughs> okay, I can get it that probably she's going to get some more qualities about her next few books. And maybe we're, we might even feel sympathy for her at some point, but I'm not ready for that right now. I don't care. I don't care right she now. She tried to kill me in my dream. Yeah. You too. She tried to kill me. I didn't have to live through it. <laughs> so it was traumatizing. I hate you, Grace. Um, so, frustrations, yeah, we kind of covered that. Yeah. Um, or awfully frustrated. Yeah, that, I guess that's a good way to put it. I'm still frustrated. Yeah. Um, we won't be unfrustrated? Until the third book comes out yeah, when it's done. until it's done. Because the second book's going to give us more pain. But then, I know it is. I don't know. Like, I don't want it to be over, but I also want to know what happens. Because once it's over, it's over. Like, these characters aren't going to be touched again. Definitely. Because she did Infernal Devices, and we wanted more, so she gave us more. She fed us. And supposedly, The Wicked Powers will be the last series. We'll I see. Know about we'll, that. we'll see. She, she, she likes the writing. writing. So, I, I'll keep reading these until she's done. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm reading the Dark Art pieces right now. Yeah. I'm in the second book. I haven't finished that series. But um, I have to be in the right state of mind. Um, I found out a spoiler for the second book for that one. I'm not going to say anything about it, because I don't know if you guys have read it. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's it for our review and reaction to Chain of Gold, first book in the Last Hour series. We obviously liked it, ready for more. Let us know if you've read it. We want to know what you think about it. What are your thoughts? What are you waiting for? What are you excited for? What are you frustrated about? Who do you love? Who do you hate? What, what relationships, relationships are you rooting for? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment your thoughts. So, yeah. Oh, we like our necklace. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're, like, slightly different. We got them at different places, but um, we still have them. And our little Brit shirts. Yeah, very important. For the London Institute. Yeah. <laughs>